Shalom, this is Levi Shore. Welcome back to Sweet and Good Torah. Okay, we have so much to talk about today. Hopefully I can get everything in the right order and uh, we'll all come together. We'll see if we can do it. Um, today is actually Yom Kippur Katan. It's, um, it was a uh, minhag uh, started by, uh, I believe, uh, Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, the Ramak, in uh, Spas in uh, northern Israel, being around the 16th century. It was included by the Arizal, Rabbi y uh, Yitzhak Loria, in his uh, Seder at Tefillah. And, and, um, and the Motzeis Gedole uh, of Torah, like in, in Israel and uh, in America, they declared today um, Yom Kippur Katan is a special day of Tefillah that uh, you know, they're calling on the Jewish people to come together and pray. And I heard, I, I think it was Rabbi Schechter said, if more people can fast for Yom Kippur Katan, it would have great effect. So there's so much going on. I mean, we, um, we're praying every day for the release of the hostages in Gaza and uh, the, 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 the evil of Hamas can be destroyed. And all these events are happening in uh, 2023. And we'll, we'll talk about the special significance of why it's happening in that year. There's um, a big uh, march uh, you know, of Jewish people all around the country coming to Washington, D.C. on... Um, Tuesday, and we'll, we'll talk about that, and uh, we'll talk about how Iran's behind all this, the significance of that, um, the, the historical relationship, you know, of um, Iran to the Persian Empire, and 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 the story of, of Purim, and then um, a war talked about in the Zohar, and in uh, the Gemara, the Talmud, and the Sekta um, of Odazara on Beis Amid Beis. It's a uh, B, I think it's um, 2B, if you're looking it up in the English. And then there's the, um, it's also mentioned in Yuma, Masekta Yuma, which is about Yom Kippur itself. And that's on, uh, I think it's uh, 10A. It's on, uh, it's Yud um, and Aleph, I think. Okay, so we'll talk about this all. Hopefully this will all come together. All right, so to begin with, before we talk about the march, what's the significance of it being the year 2023 when all this happened? And then the extremely important significance of, of, of this massacre happening on the strangest of all days on Shabbos, on Shabbos of Kodesh, the Holy Shabbat, and it happening on Shemini Atzeres and Simcha's Torah in Israel, in Eretz Yisrael. So uh, it just, it, it's, we'll talk about how it's, it's the exact opposite of the Kedusha, the holiness of the day. So just to begin, why is this all happening now in 2023? So it's interesting. So Abraham Avinu, Abraham, he was actually born in the year 1948 of the Hebrew calendar. So he was born uh, 1,948 years after the Misa Breshis, after Hashem creates everything, after the creation of Adam Harishon, of, of Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve. And when he was 75, so there is, there is a mock locus, did this actually happen when he was 70 or 75? But there's a lot of opinions that it happened when he was 75. And that was the year that Avraham actually made the covenant with Hashem. The covenant's called the bris bein abasarim, the covenant between the parts. And it's when Avraham actually asked of Hashem, he says, Bama eda ki irashena. And he was asking Hashem, he says, how will I know that I will inherit it? Meaning, how will I know that I will inherit the land of Israel, and then meaning his children, his descendants, all of us, the Jewish people, how did he know that at some point in history Hashem was going to give the Jewish people the land of Israel? So it's fascinating because this happened in 2023 of the Hebrew calendar, and we see the exact parallel happening to us now. And there's this concept of Misa Avos Simon Labani, the, the actions of the Avos, the actions of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, the actions of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, have ramifications for the children being us, being their descendants. So whatever they did in their lifetime is echoed all throughout Jewish history. And we see this exact echo happening now. What is this whole war being fought over right now? It's being fought over who who is Hashem actually going to give the land of Israel to. And we saw this horrible uh, attack by Hamas, and they, and they feel somehow just this misguided notion like through through murder and, and just physical violations and, and just 
immorality in a vote of Zara, that somehow they're going to conquer the land through their violence, and that's not how the land's going to be inherited. But Hashem specifically told Abraham and made the covenant with him that your children, your descendants, through Yitzhak and through Yaakov, are going to inherit the land, and this was the year where the covenant was made. And that's why I believe all these events are unfolding. Now, today's very important, Yom Kippur, Katan. This is, we'll talk about how there's going to be a great role for fasting and tefillah and how we were saved from the Persian Empire, the ancient Persian Empire, during the days of Mordecai and Esther, and how all these you know, things are very important. All right, so we'll, we'll jump right now to the march um, in uh, Washington, D.C. on Tuesday. Um, politically, I, I, I'm, not so, I'm not so sure politically it's going to have a big effect. Um, you know, I, I think like the politicians that are, are you know, pro-Israel, pro-the Jewish people, they're still going to be pro-Israel, pro-the Jewish people. I think the, the politicians that are against, you know, I, I don't know if it's going to sway their hearts. But, but I think there's a tremendous opportunity here for, for a spiritual healing. And I'll explain, you know, what I mean. Um, when the Second Temple was destroyed by the Roman Empire, and who's the Roman Empire? As we're heading into this Shabbos of Parsha Toldos, uh, the Roman Empire was started by the children of Asaf, the, the, the twin brother of Yaakov, of Jacob. I think Asaf is Esau, I don't know, as translated in English. But, so we see all the events swirling around here are this, uh, this family struggle from 4,000 years ago. So we have Yitzhak and Yishmael. We have Isaac, you know, who's going to give birth to the Jewish people through Jacob. And then we have Yishmael, who gives birth to the 12 princes of the Arabian Empire, the, the, the Arab powers. And, and then we see Esau's children, they start the Roman Empire. So it's called Edom. And so who's, who's the Roman Empire today? So today we see that the, the, the current modern Roman Empire is... Um, probably the power of the Western Empire now. It's not, it's not Rome, it's not Italy. There, there's still a powerful army, but the main power of the, the Western Roman Empire, excuse me, is, uh, is America, is the USA. And then uh, the main power, probably like the Eastern uh, Roman Empire that used to be in Constantinople, modern day Turkey, is probably Russia. They're the power of the, um, of the Eastern Roman Empire. But what's, and, then, and then the rest of the Roman Empire is probably uh, made up by like the powerful nations of Europe and making up NATO, like you know countries like England, France, uh, Germany, Italy, Spain, Poland. I, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm sorry if I'm leaving anyone out, but the, but the powers of NATO, the Western powers of NATO, and America are, are, are the main powers of Edom, the, the Roman Empire today in the modern world. So, what's fascinating is when the ancient Romans came and destroyed the Second Temple the Jewish people were broke up into these different groups. And on Tisha B'Av we mourn, we mourn the destruction of the temple. And uh, it says in the Gemara, it says like the, the main reason why the temple was destroyed is because of Sinas Kina. Because the Jewish people were broke up into these different groups and because we didn't have Achdus, we didn't have unity, um, you know, we, we, the temple was destroyed. So what's fascinating is there's, there's the modern equivalents of all these ancient groups. So you had like the Purushim, which were translated, I think, as like Pharisees, and that was, you know, what's now in the modern world, what would be called, you know, the Yeshiva world or, you know, Orthodox, ultra Orthodox, however you want to term it. And it's basically like following, you know, the Torah the way it was given to Moshe Rabbeinu from, from Hashem to Moshe. And then you had a group called the Zealots, and this would probably, the modern equivalent would probably be the Zionists, you know, fighting the enemies of Israel. And then you had other groups, like you had the Sadduqim, um, uh, translated as Sadducees, and uh, like the Baitusim. And, and these groups would probably be represented in the modern world by the Reform Movement and the Conservatives, the Conservative Movement, whatever, whatever it's called exactly. Um, so it's interesting. So it's still broken up into those groups. But we have a great opportunity now, and Hashem has given us through this tragedy, to start healing the division and start spiritually healing ourselves and bringing back, you know, getting, breaking down the sinus kingdom and coming back together because we're all united in tefillah and our prayers and in our actions that we want to see, 
We want to see a rescue of the hostages, the Jewish hostages and, and the non-Jewish hostages being held in, in Gaza. We want to see freedom for all the hostages, you know, as quick as possible. And, um, <coughs> and, and we want to see a destruction, you know, uh, uh, of this terrorist group, you know, that, 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 that's, that's killed, killed so many innocent Jewish people. So the, the Jewish world's united. So even though this march um, in Israel, it may not, it may not have a great effect politically, but it could have a tremendous effect in Ruchnius. Just this many Jewish people coming from all over America, coming together for, for a united cause, um, could have a tremendous effect. To start breaking down that sinus kingdom and then showing the world that this is Hashem's people. Showing the world that there's a difference. This is not going to be a march where it's, it's violence and calling for murder and death. This is calling for peace and a release of the hostages and unity and bringing God into the world, bringing Hashem into the world and showing the Jewish people what we do in a time of crisis. You know, we, we, we pray, we have tefillah to Hashem. We say Tehillim, we say the holy words of David Amalek, of King David. And we're trying to bring holiness and goodness into the world. And, and the world can see the difference and then we can start to see each other again. We can start to unite and come together. So these huge marches, these political marches, even though on a Kitsonius, an outward level, they might not accomplish a lot politically, but they can accomplish a tremendous amount in Ruchnius and spirituality by starting to bring the Jewish people together and uniting us to a common cause again. So then the Gemara talks about this war between Edom and Paras. And there's a mock locus of who's going to win. Right? So it's interesting. So in the Zohar, it mentions uh, that there's going to be three wars between Edom and Paras, between like the Western powers and, and, and Paras, which is Persia, which is modern day Iran. Now it's interesting because if Russia is the, the power of the Eastern Roman Empire, we see right now that they're attached to, to Iran and, 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 and China and like, and, and that's like, that's, you know, one side of this current conflict. So they're not united you know, with, uh, you know, so the eastern side of Edom and, you know, they're not united right now, they're split. And it says, it says in the Horus, these three wars, there'll be one at sea, there'll be one on land and one in Jerusalem. So it'll be, a, it'll be major wars, it's saying between like the western powers and the powers of the Arab world. Now, right now, there's a tension between who's the leader of Yishmael, who's the leader of the Arab world. So we saw during one, World War One. It was interesting. World War I, it was the Ottoman Empire and the Muslim world in Turkey, the, 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 you know, the, the, that um, Constantinople was, was conquered by the, um, the Islamic Jihad coming up to, you know, to the, the gates of, of Europe. So during World War I, the power of Yishmael was in Turkey, in the Ottoman Empire, and that was defeated. And then you know, that power was turned over to the British Empire. So we see that that power was turned over to Edom. And then the British Empire, we see through like the Balfour Declaration and then the Declaration of the UN, gave, you know, permission to the Jewish people to come back to the land, you know, to, to inherit the land. Now it's a political, it's not, it's not yet a Shem solution with Mashiach and a Ruchnia solution, but it was a political solution. And then we see that that's caused a lot of conflict. So it says in the Gemara, so it says that there's going to be this war between Edom and Paras. Now in... Masekta Vodazara, it says that Edom's going to defeat Paras, so that would be like the U.S. and the Western powers will defeat Iran, and then Edom will rule the world for nine months, and that will be what's called the birth pangs of Mashiach. Just, just as it takes nine months, you know, for a woman to give birth to a child, it will take the world these nine months to give birth to to the full, maybe the full revelation of Mashiach and, and the Geul, the redemption of the Jewish people. There's other opinion in the Gemara that Paras will defeat will defeat um, Edom. So like Iran would defeat, you know, America and the Western powers. That's a scary concept, right? So, so why is that? So the Gemara says that it's the builders versus the, the destroyers. So Iran or Persia, they were the builders in a sense that there was two kings of the Persian Empire, Koresh, Cyrus, as it's translated, and then later, Daryavesh, who was the son of Queen Esther and Akash So they allowed the rebuilding 
of the second temple. And then who destroyed the second temple? It was the Romans. It was Edom. It was the children of Asa that destroyed the second temple. So it says, how is it possible? How is it possible that the destroyers could possibly defeat the builders? And the answer given at the end of uh, the sugya in, in, in Masekta Yuma is very fascinating. It says, it says it's a gazer from Hashem, and we don't understand the mysteries of like how Hashem's running the world, but he wants this for a certain reason. So we're on the brink of this right now. I mean, we, this could be possibly the first war that the Zohar is mentioning, and it could be the war on sea. Now, why would it be the war on sea? Because we see that uh, the Biden administration has sent these two like um, battle strike groups, these two massive like uh, battleships with their surrounding, you know, ships and their strike groups, and I think one's in the Mediterranean, and then possibly I think one went into the Red Sea or uh, <clears throat> near the Strait of Hormuz. I'm, I'm not exactly sure where they are, but they're there. And then we start to see that what's happening now politically is that Iran, through all their proxies, is firing on the American strike groups. And while so far it hasn't been a major response from America, they, they've struck back three times to the Iranian, you know, you know, I don't know, warehouses or whatever they have in Syria. They've done it three times. But we see that the world's on the brink of this tension. So the other thing is, when did this all start? This all started on Shabbos in Israel, on Shabbat. It happened on Shemini Atzeres, on Simchas Torah. And this is the day where it never should have happened. There never should have been a massacre like this. So there's there's such kedusha, there's such holiness on that day because every year through the Jewish holidays we go through this process and it begins on Pesach, it begins on Passover and we break out of Mitzrayim, we break out of Egypt, which means we break out of the Metzar, we break out of whatever is spiritually holding us back from being holier, from connecting more to Hashem. And we break out of that on Passover. Then we count the 49 days of the Spiritus of Omer, and we elevate ourselves to the holiday of Shavuos, a Matan Torah, where we stood at Mount Sinai, and we received the Torah from Hashem. And then it keeps building. And then we build into the month of Tishrei, and we have Rosh Hashanah, and we stand before Hashem, and we declare Him our Melech, and we blow the shofar, we declare Him our, our King, and we, and we wait judgment, you know, from our Father, from our Vinu Shabashamayim, our, our Father in Heaven, our Vinu Malkeinu, our Father, our King. And then we have the 10 days of Teshuvah leading to Yom Kippur, where it's the day of Kapara, the day of atonement. We get forgiveness from our Averas. And then we go, you know, purified, you know, from, from you know, whatever holding us back. And then we live with Hashem in the Sukkah. We live with Hashem. We live with the Shekinah Hashem, Bizrat Hashem one day. The Shekinah will return to the third base of Mikdash and Hashem will live in the midst of all the Jewish people again. And we have this very close, you know, relationship, you know, with Hashem for those seven days. And then we go higher on Shemini Atzeres, when this day the massacre occurred, the October 10th. The day they occurred, it was Shabbos, it was Shemini Atzeres, meaning all that holiness, all that Kedusha from everything we've done throughout the whole year, it collects onto this eighth day, which is above the natural world, into the supernatural. And then it's Simchas Torah. And then we dance with the Torah, because we've read Hashem's Torah all year, and we all dance in happiness. We dance in happiness, you know, and just the love of, you know, the Torah and, and our love, our, our connection with Hashem. And as a day, it never should have happened. But it's a simon for us. It's a sign that it's time. It's time for us to come back together it's time for us to, to relearn the beautiful words of Hashem's Torah, to be united again like we were when we received the Torah at Har Sinai. We were called, it was Lev Echad, Ish Echad. We were like one man, one heart. You know, we are one people. And this is our chance to start step by step. We can start coming back together, unifying again. And then Bezrat Hashem soon we'll see the coming of Mashiach. But there's great events unfolding before us. And we just have to do everything step by step. And it begins, it begins by just breaking down the walls of sinus kinam, of, of, of you know, the, the, the baseless hatred that's keeping the Jewish people apart and start becoming one people again. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you back again soon on Sweet Good Torah.